What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with Season 3 of T-Mobile Bianchi here on PCM and I'm so pumped to get into this season today. Obviously, we have the face cam right now. Bit of a change for me. Hopefully it adds to the videos and makes them feel a little bit more personable, hopefully, and just enjoyable in general. But anyhow, we have a beautiful squad. Moscon, Kemna, and Chikone, as you see right here, in the jerseys on the rider photos. I've gone through and done all the rider photos. We have uh, the likes of a marker as well, who should be updated. Marco Brenner, Gamper, Jakobs as well. So yeah, cannot wait to get into this, guys. Our squad is looking fantastic. So looking quickly at the attribute screen we have right here, we can see our leaders in each area. Uh, of course, we have Kemner and Chikone, our big leaders in the mountains, Tiberi and Bissiger in the time trials. We have a decent cobble team now, still not the best, but we have Rich, Jakobs and Moscon, um, a decent trio really in the cobble. Zabel still really is our only leader in the sprints. I think we need some competition for him going into season four, perhaps guessing way too far ahead of myself um, already. But yeah, we have a pretty strong team in most areas, I feel, as we head into World Tour for the first time. As you would have seen in the previous video, make sure you've gone and checked that out if you haven't already. We went through the entire off season, had a look at all the changes in World Tour. We have some very different teams, different jerseys, Spotify, and now a team. Facebook have taken over Trek as well. They've signed Hershey and Sagan. And we also have a new jersey. One thing I forgot to mention, actually, is that we now have Williams Martini. Shout out to Blackwall, of course. You guys know he has done a great kind of career mode on his channel. You know who he is. If not, his link will be in the description below. But we've added his Williams Martini team. I haven't changed the squad because I think there are a few overlaps between mine and his squad. But you can see they've taken over that Chinese team. So they have Malexi uh, and a few other guys who are pretty strong, to be fair, for a Conti Pro outfit. So we have now navigated to the planner screen. So you can see all the races we have coming up. Pretty much focus on World Tour races, but we have a few others thrown into the mix. I probably won't show you, like the Tour of Colombia. We've done it already and it's not a World Tour race. So I'll probably skip it um, actually showing you guys. I'll probably play it off screen myself but anyhow you can see the planning I've done and really you can get an overview here of who's going to ride which races in the coming episodes but also I have given Kemna and Chikone a later start date they're not starting till Strada Bianca and Parry Nice because really we need to save those guys for later in the season uh, they're still doing over 70 race days each so far because they're going to ride two Grand Tours each you can see they're both going to the Giro at present, we have Moscon as well going to that race. But Kemner and Chikone, we're going to hold on on giving them their debut for now. They're going to kind of slowly build into the season so they're fit for the Grand Tours. And also, I do want to take a look at the sponsor objectives. We don't have any until March, which is a bit of a surprise. So hopefully we can fly, uh, fly through to Strada Bianca, which really is a massive start. Massive race for our season. Of course, we won it last year with Gianni Moscon, but going by importance, we have a top 10 at Milan San Remo, our main objective. Also a top five at the Giro, that's going to be big as well. Uh, we have Il Lombardia, among others in Germany and Italian. But anyhow, looking really at today's episode, we're going to do the Tour Down Under. I also want to do the Mallorca Challenge Races and the Cadel Evans Great Ocean Road Race. So that's the plan, if we take a look, at the parkours for the tour down under. We have mostly flat stages, a few climbs of course, with Wollonga Hill, the main kind of queen stage of the race. So six stages in total before we head to Spain and then the Cado Evans Great Ocean Road Race. So should be a fun one. Let's take a look at our team for the tour down under. So leading the squad, we have Gianni Moscon and Matteo Fabro. We also have Rick Zabel, in the sprints and helping those guys out, we have Mikhail Scher, Georg Zimmerman, Zhuka Horvat, and Davide Babasso. Away we go then for the start of season three. And already I can see Facebook Trek right here with Madua and the like, Bora Hansgora Lotto with a new jersey. We also have Team Spotify with Daniel trying to attack away, but some way up, 
to the breakaway already. If we take a look through though, you can see Peugeot, Clarion, Sunweb, Allianz. We have so many nice new jerseys. Same goes for Bahrain, uh, NTT, Patagonia right there. Looking absolutely brilliant, it has to be said. Definitely let me know which is your favorite of these jerseys in the comments below because I cannot pick. I love all of these jerseys and so excited to see them throughout the World Tour this season. Anyhow, I do want to take a very quick look at the start list for this race. So we have Caleb Ewan, Eric Fetter, who's a very good young rider for Lotto. We have Joao Almeida, among others, for De Koenig. David Godu is here, now a very, very talented rider. Michael Matthews is here. Dylan Toons, as I mentioned. We have Delgado, the new gen for Bora Hansgrohe, a very kind of good puncher. We have Aronsman. Valverde still going strong now well into his 60s. We have Caden Groves as well uh, riding for the home team. So let's see how this one plays out today. Oh, it's a big moment. I was just about to say we set up our sprint train, but Gianni Moscon falls on the opening day of season three. What a nightmare. Hopefully he can continue, which he can. And really, we need him back in. Wellens, Aronsman, Ulysses falls as well. Moscon is trying to get straight back into the mix right here and he should do that I think if we push on right now we're almost there already so hopefully he can do that himself but at the front Mikhail Scher is leading Horvat Babato then Rick Zabel who will look of course to win today's stage do I try and drop Georg Zimmerman oh boy I might have to let's drop Georg Zimmerman and try and tempo back in Gianni Moscon whilst Mikhail Scher doing a great job on the front so we now have 7k to go we can use our final gels tunes is on the front we have the likes of Ewan Modulo and others to our left not sure where Viviani is right now there he is in the Astana colors today of course we can now up this to 99 I don't think Moscon and those guys are getting back in actually a bit of a disastrous start for Gianni Moscon here we go though Giga Horvat up to 99 here comes Madawa what a rider he is. We're going to have to sprint right now with Giga. Caleb Ewan is there. But we get the jump on them, can we? Here with Bobato. Great stuff. Rick Zabel going for the line. Can he beat Caleb Ewan today? Very close. Ewan versus Rick Zabel. But Rick Zabel gets us off to a winning start in World Tour. You love to see it. What a win today. We get off to a winning start here in World Tour. And that was all about the lead out. The other guys went way too early. Ewan was coming back quickly on Rick Zabel, but we take advantage. They messed up completely. But I think Moscon, as you see, losing two and a half minutes. He's lost the race already at the beginning. That is a disaster. We're all in for Matteo Fabro right now because we also dropped Georg Zimmerman. Maybe that was a bit of a mistake. But anyhow, let's think about the positives. We're in the leader's jersey after the stage win. Underway we go then and getting a look at Zabel in the leader's jersey right there not quite sure how to play this today though because i don't think it's really suited to rick zabel let's see how hard the tempo is maybe moscon or babato could be our leaders anyhow we have ended up with a small breakaway two riders sokolov and fedrigo up the roads right now and no one else deciding to go in the breakaway okay and this is an interesting move because Tymon Aronsman has just attacked up the road and he is a dangerous rider for sure so uh, we'll see how much room he is allowed in terms of time okay so it is a very quick rhythm on the front and Jos van Emden has made a move a pretty ambitious move if you ask me um, as a few of our guys are now starting to struggle. Let's try and keep the rhythm up as we have seen a few riders start to drop out the back as well, including Aronsman after that attack that has surely backfired for him. But this, as you see, is a very difficult race so far. Here we go then, 7k to go. Giga Horvat trying to come right to the front of the peloton. We are controlling things right now with Fabro right here too. He can probably take position at 85 but let's use our final gels and Zabel could well just about be in a position to sprint for this one despite it being uphill we have Babato and we have Moscon if not in fact I'm going to do this and try and go right now with Gianni Moscon Babato can go second wheel I think he's a bit quicker than Gianni especially today so here we go let's try and up this with Moscon on the descent we are leading Right from the front here, let's go 99 
with Gianni Mosca now coming uphill to the finish. Have I gone a little early? Maybe I have right now. Let's go 95 with Gianni Moscon Babato looking very, very strong. But here we go. There goes Caleb Ewan. There goes Babato. There goes, uh, goes Zabal. But Caleb Ewan out of this world with that acceleration. No chance for us today. Matthew's second, but Caleb Ewan from a different planet. With that, we do actually lose the leader's jersey, but no shame in that. Caleb Ewan, so, so good. So we're now underway today, but we don't have the best race day conditions at all for our leaders. Not quite sure who to go for. Maybe Pabato with a decent sprint and good hill, but we'll see how difficult it is on the corkscrew road. I also have decided to give our first little opportunity to our new signing, Mikhail Cher. Obviously, he's a veteran in the team, but nice to see him up the roads with the gorilla right here. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Matteo Fabro has just fallen all by himself as well. How does that happen? Gigo, you're going to have to wait up for him. Matteo Fabro is our only shot now in the GC on a minus two today. And he is already behind. What is going on at this race, man? Okay, we have got Fabro back in. But it wasn't without difficulty. And that could really hurt us on the final climb today. So the Peloton are now racing to the foot of the corkscrew road. Let's go right now. Sharon Horvat are trying to relay, but it's such a difficult tempo set by Kevin Racer and the FDJ team. I assume that is for either Izagire or more likely David Godzu. Here we go. Babato trying to stay in a good position. Georg Zimmerman can try and do the same. We have Moscon trying to look after Rick Zabel as well. Let's try and tempo at 90 with Rick Zabel. If Zabel can get over this climb today, that would be brilliant. But Fabro, I do not believe it. It is all going wrong for us at the Tour Down Under in the GC. Let's go 95 with him. 99 attack. Just try and get to the front, Matteo Fabro, if you can, my man. We've had no attacks off the front, but here we go. Honore, Aronsman trying to go off the front. We're out of position. Georg Zimmerman, you need to tempo right now because Godu, Aronsman and Honore are gone for the stage right here. Zimmerman, come on, my man. Try and bring them in. So luckily for us, there is a little bit of a descent right here. Georg Zimmerman trying to do absolute God's work. We can use all our gels. I think Fabro should be okay in the GC. We got to that puncture pretty quickly seemingly but now uh, we have around a 15 second gap I think it's too much are the guys ahead going to take the stage we still have Zabel here to challenge if not here we go Rick Zabel trying to catch on Ray up the road Zabel trying to go for the stage but we have Caleb Ewan our arch nemesis here in Australia and Caleb Ewan takes the stage ahead of Zabel heartbreak for Honoré Zabel a solid second place. There is nothing we could do about that man today. So it goes from 1-0 to 1-0 to 2-1 in the battle between Caleb Ewan and Rick Zabel. Caleb Ewan, man, he is so, so quick, especially on home soil, it seems. So the stage is underway here in Australia and Horvat on a zero day, but not a really good day for the team. We will, though, try to go and make it 2-2 with Rick Zabel in this one. Entering Port Elliot, then it's the only real difficulty on the day. And Bora Hansgrower and Facebook Trek are the teams to try and make it really difficult. Zabel, sadly for him, is going to have to up this maybe to 90. Um, Babato, maybe to just to try and make sure they're able to stay right to the front here. But the pace doesn't seem too difficult for now, that we should be fine for a mass sprint. So we have six and a half K to go right now. We're going to try and really push it. Use the gels 99 over that climb as Dylan Toons is so good on the hills. We need to watch out for him for sure. We have Zabel losing a lot of red, but now we come right to the front with Georg Zimmerman. Four and a half K to go. I've maybe gone a little early right now. Moscon is sat in the wheels. Uh, he should be okay right there but now 3k to go Zabel is recovering at that red at a pretty nice rate to be fair share can sit up just like that we have tunes on Zabel's wheel where is Caleb Ewan I cannot see him for now he is so far back right here Babato trying to go for the line Rick Zabel I've gone way too late though surely with Rick Zabel today can we find any space no we cannot and Caden Groves takes the win my bad completely went far too late and Caden Groves, he punishes us today. We finished really quickly in that one, but just way too late. I was so focused 
on Caleb Ewan being out of position that I completely forgot. Caden Groves, Mark Soroy, the rest of these guys are in the race as well and we completely messed up. Zabul in the top five, not the end of the world, but I think we missed an opportunity right there. So quickly, we do have these messages and these are interesting to me because at the Giro, we do have Red Bull racing, which means Tom Pickock most likely will be there. You can see the other kind of wildcard teams, but really intrigued to see Red Bull and potentially Pickock at the Giro this year. So we get underway. Zabul in the points jersey today, despite being second there. And overall, we have the queen stage of the race. Joao Almeida will definitely be one of the favourites. Probably David Godu is my favourite for the day. We're longer hill. It is time. And Matteo Fabro is going to have to do his best on a plus one day. 30 seconds down currently in the GC. So I've spent a bit of time trying to get Moscon in today's break. I know he is, of course, three minutes down in GC, but still, he is just not allowed up the road. So then we enter the infamous Wollonga Hill for the first time, expecting a very, very quick rhythm right here. Fabro being protected. Let's see how many riders are here at the top and over the top of the climb. So Zabu is long gone. I'm trying to push this over the top we have 63 riders at the very front a few less right now with georg zimmerman tempoing very very hard these guys let come on let's try and get to the front try and tempo with georg zimmerman i think moscon can sit with matteo fabro just like that there you go whilst the rest of our guys are going to try and keep the tempo going until the foot of the next Wollonga hill and it may not be a massive change but rob stannard nick schultz Magnus Court, these guys are strong. Sebastian Berwick as well has developed pretty well. Uh, you can see some decent riders are out the back. So I really think it's worth pushing on here and trying to maintain this gap. Here we go then, 5k to go. Our four-man train have done a wonderful job. All of them can go 99 right here just to try and push us onto the climb. In fact, they're all completely done. They can sit up for the day whilst Fabro needs to go 90. Right now with Moscon trying to protect him. But these guys are so quick. We have Baggioli Madawa right here. Where is Joao Almeida? Can't see him for now. There he is. Some way back. Up the road. It's Madawa trying a little move. Ballerini as well. Setting a tempo. This is very, very difficult. But we are right to the front here. With Moscon still protecting Matteo Fabro. There goes Madawa. Let's try and react. Right now, if we can, can we try and get in the wheel? Getting blocked a little bit. Let's try and sit right here with Matteo Fabro. Can we try and sprint right now away from these guys? Fabro going for the stage. Matteo Fabro, what a move that is. We need to keep it going over the top right now. Fabro going for the line in the Santos Tour Down Under. And we take the stage win. What a win by Fabro ahead of De La Cruz. Love to see it. I think we'll take time as well. On Honoré, what a stage that was. Fairness to Caleb Ewan, he did try to stay there but was dropped out the back. I do not believe it. What a win that was by Matteo Fabro today. A wonderful attack in, I think, the final kilometre. To be fair, looking at it, we have same times until that Caleb Ewan group. So that was important that we did push Caleb Ewan out the back. And Matteo Fabro goes in to the leader's jersey. What a stage. Matteo Fabro looks set to win the Santos Tour Down Under right now. So Rick is on a pretty horrible minus two days. So I doubt we're going to make it his second stage win and our hat trick at the Tour Down Under. But Fabro in the leader's jersey. He just needs to finish today to secure the jersey. So we swing across the finish line, but not quite for the final time. One more lap, 7k to go. Here in, I believe, Adelaide, Zhugohovac. Can I probably go to 95? Try and put Zabul in a good place. We don't have the best lead out. We, uh, we don't have the best sprinter either today. But Fabro is the important one. Put him to 85 pacing just to try and make sure he stays to the front like that. But now, Moscon up to 99. Try not to get blocked by Zhugohovac. Horrible stuff with 3k to go. But where is Caleb Ewan? A bit further back, I think. This time we have decline right now coming up on our left. Gianni Moscon can go, 2k to go, but Barso can go as well. Where are the other main sprinters? There goes Viviani on the right-hand side. Rick Zabel going for the line. He doesn't have it today, though. That is for sure. And it will be decline 
taking the win ahead of Caden Groves. I think it will be Kayla Buen in fourth place behind Ethan Hazer. But Matteo Fabro will win the Santos Tour Down Under. So it will be Decline taking the win for Bora Hansgrohe. Great win for him looking at his attributes. I went too early considering the race days. Usually I think it would have been fine. Uh, but Zabal just uh, really couldn't hold on. 66 resistance. I think it was lower on the day as well. But like I said, Fabro wins the Tour Down Under. We win the first World Tour race of our season. What a win for the team. I think we were close to Ewan as well in the sprinters jersey so a great start to our season so we are now at the national team selection and we went for italy last season with i think fabro and moscon getting on really well this year we're going to go for germany try and change it up just a little bit so we are now going to go to the mallorca challenge in spain or the mallorca challenges as you see four one day races and i think i'll try and condense them into kind of a three or five minute highlights package across the four races don't want to spend too long on these races before heading to the Kaysel Evans great ocean road race and quickly looking at our planner I have kind of separated the teams between Australia and Spain so we don't have any kind of overlaps there I think it's more realistic uh, to play at this base so we have the same team from the tour down under going to the Kaysel Evans great ocean road race and you can see the lineups for the Mallorca challenges. Underway in Spain then, and you can see we do have the Red Bull team here with Mulberg. I think Pidcock is here at this race as well as Connor Swift. So exciting to see those guys. Uh, I think we have Bissiger leading us today on a very nice plus three day. So we do actually have a few debutants in the team today. Johan Jakobs, Hannes Decker as well, making his professional debut. He will be in our lead out alongside Gamper as well, Another debutant who will lead out Bissiger today and really hoping we can challenge for the win here with Bissiger on such a great day. So we now have six and a half K to go. Mara Schmidt coming to the front of the group. It is a very difficult peloton right now trying to get to the front. I'm actually going to put Schmidt to 95 to try and counter that with Bissiger trying to stay on Gamper's wheel. We have the uh, BNB Vital Concepts train to our right same with Astana with Aberastri in their ranks we have three and a half k to go here we go now Decker can launch the sprint in his professional debut maybe with 2k to go we can go with him it's very slightly uphill though so I'm going to watch out here we go Gamper leading out Stefan Bisker today have we left it a little late maybe Bisker versus the likes of Jensen a few others Albert Torres on the right it's very close and Albert Torres takes the win. It's only going to be a third place for Bisca in this one. Big win for Albert Torres, to be fair to him. Bisca, hope for more. Hopefully we can get the next one. So we join the second day here at Mallorca with Covey up the road in the breakaway, trying to put him up the road to support our leaders. We have Pronsky making his debut as well today, but Ali Ortiova marker probably, I think with the race days, more likely uh, to lead us in this one. So we have 28k to go, 31 riders are here. I've noticed we have the likes of Swift and Gamay still here. If they're still there at the finish, they will almost certainly win. So I think we have to try something with, I think, Aliotti at this point. So Pronsky has put in a little bit of a rhythm. 22 are now here. He can sit up and Aliotti is going to put in a little attack. Let's go 85 and see if we can get away Dina the only man who can follow us right now and that would be a perfect move uh, these two guys going to the finish so we sweep downhill Aliotti and Dina have about a 50 second lead on the group behind Volta we have Gamay in this group as well as Ben Swift so really we need to stay ahead of the chasing pack here we go then Dina is trying to put in an attack to try and drop Gino Aliotti we need to stay on his wheel I was working with him to be fair but he thinks he's not going to win this in a sprint even though he is stronger than Aliotti in the sprinting department but he cannot quite drop the Italian and that is perfect for us here we go we can stay on his wheel for a minute ahead of anyone else I'm pretty sure the winner today will come from the group at the front let's just try and stay on the Hungarian champs wheel with 5k to go we're almost over this little climb and we're looking pretty good uh, with Aliossi with Pronsky following up behind as well. Here we go. We can stay on Dina's wheel 
Four and a half K to go to the finish. And you can bet that after that attack, I'm not working with this man. We have 50 seconds to play with. I am sat on his wheel as we sweep downhill. I'm going to stay there to the line or at least until the final kilometre. Here we go now. Aliotti recuperating a little bit of red. Dina must be so strong today to go with these tactics. But here we go. 900 metres. Let's try and out sprint the Hungarian with Aliotti. Can we do it? Can we come round? No, we cannot. Or oh, can we? Can we come round in the final? Aliotti. Heartbreak for us. We went slightly too late and Dina holds on to be fair to him for the victory. We played it pretty much perfectly, but Dina riding for Kamesa, a very good rider. I'm sure he'll be a world tour rider pretty soon. Just about uh, had enough in the finish to out sprints Aliotti. So it seems we're going to have to beat this man again today. Dina joins us alongside little Tom Pickock. Love seeing how small he is in game compared to the rest of these guys. But we are up the roads with the breakaway king himself, Simon Pello. No, not Thomas again, Simon Pello, the breakaway king. Anyhow, bad day for us. We'll see what we can do. I think Pronsky will be our leader. And for the first time in this save, we do actually have Williams Martini, but Lou, their leader, is actually dropped already, sadly, for them. The, uh, the Chinese champion right there. We have 50 riders at the front and our guys are really, really struggling. So we have eight and a half K to go. We are seeing some moves here. Mulberger and Pickock are really upping the tempo. Let's make sure we stay right there. I think Pronsky is definitely our leader. Uh, so let's try and get Aliotti to the front. Pello has done a brilliant job after being in the breakaway, but let's try and put Pronsky to the front on Aliotti's wheel. Here we go, Aliotti coming to the front. Six K to go past Mulberger, Pip, uh, Pickock, McNulty. Really strong riders at this race. Frolov as well. Really talented regen for Novo Nordisk. That is now 5k to go approaching that final hill. Here we go then. 2k to go. Aliotti leads us up the climb. But Mulberger and Pickcock. What a team that is for Red Bull Racing here. Pronsky trying to hold on to some red if he can. But now we're seeing the attack of Frolov. The Russian. Narvaez is following McNulty. Pickcock as well. Pronsky staying there or thereabouts to be fair. Now with around half a kilometre to go. We're way too far back though. I think we're blocked a little bit. Pickcock looking good. Can we sneak through on the left hand side? It's close at the front. I think Narvaez has this one. We're not going to quite get there with Pronsky. Jonathan Narvaez takes the win here in Mallorca today as Dina second again. What a rider he is. Boy oh boy. I didn't notice this guys. Chris Froome is at this race here in Mallorca. He's not even uh, going to get a top 50, I don't think. What a shame to see Froome struggling so much. Oh my, guys. Oh my. I've just seen the email. Lena Kemner is injured. He's not meant to be starting his season until March, but he has a fractured thigh. Lena Kemner has a fractured thigh. How long is that going to keep him out for? This could be a disastrous first episode of the season start of March I really hope that is true and he is fine uh, to compete with his planned schedule okay then seven and a half k to go in the final race here in Mallorca we have Johan Jacobs a big 75 76 flat on the day on the front he is grinding away right now Dries de Bont has put in a good move a very strong rider as well to be fair but here comes Jacobs up to 99 let's try and give Biska a good lead out despite this pretty poor race day for us. We're lapping some guys on this finishing circuit. We have Astana with Aberastri, Cancer. The guys are following the Astana train over ours. Uh, and I'm going to take that personally. They clearly don't rate our train very highly. But here goes Gamper up to 99. Maybe gone a little early. Maybe for Bissiger. Today we're going to try and hold his wheel for as long as possible. There goes Bisga. Surely too late today. And it will be Timothy Dupont who takes the win. Bisga fights back for third place. Probably the best we could have done with that minus race day. So not the best set of races for us here in Mallorca. I think we had three podiums but no wins. We were closest with Aliotti of course in the second race. We're now heading back to Australia for the final race of the episode. So we get underway here in Australia and finally I have fixed the German national jersey for Zabo. You can see it now suits the new jersey design. I really like that one very very much. Less white than the previous design but still very very nice for Rick. We have a super strong start list for this year's race in Australia. 
Van Aert, Pedersen, Van der Poel. I know Sagan is here as well. Just a super strong start list. So this is going to be very difficult though. I think we're going to focus on Rick Zabel. So we currently have a move up the roads. Cosnafrat is up the roads. Cher actually accidentally got here. Let's try and follow Ekhoff if we can instead. We're just going to relay. We cannot follow Nils Ekhoff who is attacking very early for Sunweb Alliance, and it's been a pretty easy race to this point, but really exploding right now with attacks by Formulo and Hershey, or even just setting a really hard rhythm. So 14k to go, it's a massive move. Van Marker and Van Der Poel follow Set Van Marker up the roads. Fabro needs to try and react right now. Let's put him to 95. Zabel sat in the wheel. We have Hershey moving up, and those guys are now caught, but another move by Set Van Marker. Let's try and push it with Fabro, but Zabel is struggling so much with this tempo. I think we'll have to go with Gianni Moscon instead because Zabul, I don't think he's getting to the finish at the front with all these attacks. Here we go then, 8k to go, the final little climb here in Geelong. We need to go 99 with Babato to stay with the guys at the front and Moscon up to 90. Zabul is holding on at this stage. We have Vanderpool and Hershey. Let's try and take Hershey's wheel with Gianni Moscon if we can. Let's reposition the camera a little bit. Look how much Rick Zabel is struggling. Now just 67 riders are at the front and Zabel is pretty much done. As you see, I think Gianni Moscon is going to have to somehow try and lead us here. Can I take the wheel of Peter Sagan with Moscon? We can indeed. 3k to go. We're going to have to try something out the box here. Let's try it right now with Gianni Moscon. We're leading out Matthew Vanderpool. We can't go like that at all. We'll try and follow the Dutchman, but Philipson, he gets the jump on us. We're not going to take this by any stretch. It's going to be Jasper Philipson who takes it by a mile here in Australia. Van der Poel second, and we just didn't have anything left with our sprinter. So I guess today, really, Philipson is such a strong sprinter. Good flat, good secondaries as well. And if we go down and take a look at Rick Zabel, only 49th. Really, his lack of secondaries were on show today and not really the strongest flats or hill either. So maybe, really, Zabul's weaknesses were exposed. So guys, that rounds out today's episode. I hope you enjoyed. We've covered quite a few races, 11 I think in total. Uh, really, I want to keep these within half an hour if possible, um, outside the Grand Tours and stuff. So hopefully it's not too long, um, but we can see anyhow Fabro, top of the World Tour standings as things currently stand. If we go to the team rankings as well, we've got our World Tour journey off to the perfect start here, top of the World Tour team standings. Looking quickly at the next episode then, we will be skipping to the UAE Tour and Omloop Pet Newsblad. I may cover Kerner Brussel Kerner and Le Saman as well, but really UAE Tour followed by Omloop Pet Newsblad, which many consider to really be the start of the proper kind of true uh, cycling season. We're then going straight into some big races, Strada, Paris-Nice and Terreno, where we will see the debut of at least Giulio Ciccone. Hopefully, we will see Leonard Kamner as well, if he can recover from that injury. That will round out today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Smash that like button if you did, and let me know what you thought in the comments below. Always appreciating any feedback. So yeah, let me know what you thought, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.